the festival day, the great feast of Pentecost, the 50th day of Easter, and it's a great uh, day to celebrate and mark the coming of the Holy Spirit. And normally, uh, that would be filled with energy talking about the Tower of Babel and how Babel is being uh, overturned with a new understanding and a common language and understanding among all manner of people from all over the world. But with what's going on in the world and has been in recent weeks, I find myself turning more to what I would call a kinder, gentler Pentecost, uh, that is the story in the Gospel. Uh, the, the words that come in the midst of these terrible shootings and wars and rumours of wars and uh, all kinds of things going on in many of our own lives in the, in the parish with, with uh, bad diagnoses and worries about adult children and on and on and on. And into this we hear, peace I leave with you, Jesus says, my, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. It's worth remembering that this passage is part of what Jesus says as he takes leave, prepares to take leave of his disciples. And he's about to go to Calvary. He's about to go to his death. This is not a light-hearted romp passage. And, and yet he's still saying, I have peace, and that peace I am giving to you, not as the world gives. This is not peace that is the absence of conflict. This is not, this is not peace that is uh, about feeling serene necessarily. It's, it's not peace that says everything's going to be all right. Peace isn't peace wonderful. Things are clearly not going to be all right, and yet still he says he has peace. What is this peace? that he's conferring on us, on his disciples, through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Well, what we tend to say, and what you've heard me say before, is that peace that passes understanding is what happens when God is present. And what happens when God is present is all of the things that we're promised in the gospel, courage and hope and love and joy and patience and compassion and all of that. And so, as you've heard me say, when we pass the peace to each other in the middle of the service, it is not half-time, it's not a prelude to coffee hour, it is a prayer. It is, I desire for you everything that happens when God is present. I desire for you love and courage and hope, even if things appear and circumstances are really tough, I still desire for you these things that incur when God is present. And you say, and also with you. I desire that for you as well. So we remember that Jesus is conferring this peace uh, in the midst of a terrible time. And yet, it is okay to celebrate. It's still okay to feel okay. It's still wonderful to have things to celebrate when we feel good. We don't have to take on feeling bad uh, because everything's awful. I do not begrudge my friends and family in England from this marvellous celebration. I don't know if you've seen any of the, the Jubilee, Platinum Jubilee celebration. It's really quite, quite stunning. And I don't think because the world's falling apart that it's wrong to celebrate. It's worth remembering here uh, where we end and where the other begins. The, um, I've long since given up fighting the split infinitive and entering sentences with prepositions. They still make me wince, but Language is a changing thing, and, and so it is with the words sympathy and empathy. Nowadays, empathy is what we're all meant to have, uh, and sympathy is considered a bit dodgy because it's a bit condescending, not quite right. Uh, empathy is much more powerful, right? But consider the underlying concepts for a moment. Is it better to feel in, or is it better to feel with and alongside? So it seems to me when we take on the suffering of another, full meaning of empathy, we are doubling the suffering. When we move alongside one who is suffering, rather as a splint works with a broken bone, or as um, a presence can be incredibly powerful for someone who, who is all over the map, uh, then, then we're exhibiting peace. We're marking and bearing witness, whatever the circumstance, to what happens when God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, is present. And all kinds of remarkable things follow. Um, so we don't have to take on the suffering of another 
Um, nor do we have to withhold from celebrating those things that are given to us to celebrate, including this celebration today. I share this story with, with Sage's permission, but if you know Sage, you know that she is absolutely the last person who will get depressed about anything. I tend, she had some bad stuff going on with her foot and, and knees, and I, I, would, I would get depressed like crazy. And I've had steroids and they have a depressive effect on me. And she was prescribed steroids and said to me, do you think I'm gonna get depressed? And I said, darling, if you're not depressed now, you're never gonna be depressed. <laughs> We do not have to take on with others feeling all bent out of shape around us. We don't have to become bent out of shape. In fact, it is bearing witness to the peace of God when we can be non-anxious, present, and marked by the kind of hope and joy that Jesus has as he addresses his friends in the Last Supper. The world can be a very difficult place, but the word is still there. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, let not your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Let us respond to the gospel in silence and in prayer.